character is faced with. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you very much for and, having me. And congratulations on a successful outing of your neck meeting. Thank you. There were several issues that were, that were discussed. Some described the issues as a thesis on its own. But in summary, can you tell us uh, what's your message to relevant stakeholders as regards issues that affect the union, most especially as regards um, the welfare of your members? Don't forget, uh, thank you very much. Uh, NASU covers a whole range of uh, sectors. And we have uh, the neck hard to touch on all the sectors. And uh, for the universities, our main focus right now is the unpaid salaries of four months of our members. And we are, we are astonished that despite the fact that uh, Mr. President already gave approval for 50% of that four months of pay salary be paid, it's over, it's over two months now that directive of Mr. President has been given to the Minister of Finance. We are shocked that up to now, nothing has been done. NEC had mandated us that if the salary is not paid in the next two weeks or so, that our members should go on total strike. And we are going to strictly abide by the decision of the NEC on that. We are also as far as the university and the university centers was that we are also the NEC also directed that we should play active part in the renegotiation committee of the outstanding unimplemented part of our 2009 FDA NASU agreement. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are hopeful that uh, the Yayali committee that was put in place that was inaugurated two days back, despite the fact that we were humiliated at the inauguration, we had the mandate of NEC to push ahead with the renegotiation process and put behind us what happened at the inauguration. Uh, when it comes to the schools and colleges, you, you know we cover schools and colleges too. Our main focus in schools and colleges is that the federal government, the former government under President Muhammad Buhari, uh, approved this 65 years retirement and 40 years in service to the, the, the teachers. And uh, the next director that we should pursue the aspect of the neg neglect that we should resist that the school system runs not only by the teaching people, mm. but also by the non-teaching. And as a result of that, we have decided that we should push ahead with our, our struggle for the extension of that package to our non-teaching staff in schools and colleges across the length and breadth of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. For poly, we are also going to be asking for the renegotiation of the agreements and the scheme of service that was uh, approved by the Office of the Head of Service, which we have rejected and it has been suspended. LBT directed that the scheme of service should be suspended. We want good action to be taken on that so that we can move ahead. Colleges of Education, we have also analyzed the situation there and we think that our members deserve to be better treated, but we commend the federal government for agreeing to allow a whole number of colleges of education to begin to run degree, degree programs. Mm -hmm. That for us is also a forward uh, movement. For examination bodies, uh, what we are saying is that, includes the libraries, is that the state government should wake up from their slobber and fund their libraries. Mm. There's need for state, go state government, state libraries to, to function efficiently. We should have modern libraries. Mm. We, have, we, have, we have gone beyond this idea of uh, libraries that are having books in shelves. So we ask the state government to be proactive. And then we have the issue of the research, research and projects institutions. 
where we are owed 12 months salaries hmm. for, for almost seven, eight, nine years now on resolve. So NEC also has directed that we should push for that using all legitimate means to get the, this area paid by government. The last but not the least is uh, the fact that NEC also said that we should work collaboratively with the NLC so that all issues that has to do with the issue of this incessant increases in the prices of petrol uh, products should stop because the, 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 the negative impact on, the, on our members is extremely unacceptable. They are no longer able to even go to work. Uh, it has to be said clearly here that this economic reform is not in the interest of the masses. There must be faith in this economic reform of President Bola Ahmed Sinubu. Without this economic reform having human face, it then means that a whole lot of human beings would have died before the end of this so-called reform. This reform is also not, it doesn't show on even those that are occupying very big offices. Because there is, there is extravagance at, at the top level. People are living in no pullers. Top government functionaries are living in no pullers. They are driving exotic cars. Why Africa, an ordinary Nigerian cannot afford uh, three square meals? They can't even enter vehicles. Some of them trek from se for several kilometers from their home to their places of work. It's important at the next, as directed, that we should appeal to President Bola Ahmed Chinubu that he should allow this economic reform of his government to have some human face so that half of Nigerians wouldn't have gone with this economic reform before the better day that they talk about will come. It's good for all Nigerians to enjoy the better day, not that they will die of hunger before the better day come. We ask this president to reverse, and that is the position of, of Nasunek, to reverse this last increase. It's unjustifiable, it's uncalled for. It's purely an act of wickedness. So this is how far we have gone. We often talk about funding of education, because if we don't fund the education, then there are going to be a lot of problems. So I think in a, in a summary, this is what the NEC has discussed. Okay, moving forward, um, after a successful conference, um, personally, there's an observation I have in the labor movement, and that is um, collective bargaining agreement being honored. Mm. And I'm um, looking at even the last um, encounter you had with um, a committee that was set up. Um, what would be your message to relevant stakeholders, especially the government, towards ensuring that um, there is harmony and there is um, effective communications according to the rules um, that guide the operation of industrial relations? I, I, obviously, the, even the, the, the chairman of the renegotiating committee, uh, Alaji Ayale Ame, also mentioned the need for the unions and the government in the process of this renegotiation to ensure that what will be contained, what will be the final outcome of the renegotiation, will result in an agreement that is implementing uh, on, on, on like what we have had in the past, where government team will not we not seek for the proper mandate. Mm. Or there is a situation where you have a government negotiating team constituted by the federal government with those who don't have power mm. to commit the government. So we think that the major problem has to do with the fact that you constitute a, a negotiating committee and that negotiating committee does not have power to commit so eventually, when they eventually enter into this agreement, mm -hmm. government will just walk away from those agreements. And that, those are issues we, are, we intend to place even before this renegotiating committee, mm -hmm. that we are not going to agree 
to a situation where after government had agreed mm -hmm. with us through the negotiating committee, government will turn around. This problem is government problem. Because those who have negotiated with us in, in the past are appointees of government. Mm -hmm. And the, most times they even adjourn the negotiating meeting to say they want to consult with their principals. Mm -hmm. They come back, commit to the government, and don't wait for government to turn around and say they cannot implement. I think the government should develop the will to negotiate honestly mm -hmm. and stop deceiving uh, the unions. Mm -hmm. That's the only way out. It's After a, a government is continuum, because yes. it might be this argument about, yeah, oh, we're well, not the one that, that negotiated. Uh, that, that agreement is, uh, is signed by the former government. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's not implementable. We can't we can accept it. If the government accepts the asset, they should also be ready to accept the liability. The truth of the matter is that the crisis and the challenges that we have witnessed in the past in the university, the university center, and even other tertiary institutions like polytechnics and colleges of education, is as a result of government not keeping to its part of the bargain. Very quickly, I want you to react to the proliferation of private universities and um, the demand for quality education. Every corner you go to now, you find private universities. And when you want to look at the welfare of even the workers there, that might not be a same agreement to have now. But what would be your take on this? I, th I think corruption is the, the bane of this thing that we are having. Every, there is competition now as to how much new universities the government power approves. Which really is not supposed to be the case. The government is not doing what is right. There is arbitrariness. There is lack of even standard. You approve all of these private universities, you are indirectly lowering the standard of education. Some of them are operating at high level, but some are also not operating at high level. Where are the checks and balances? Mm -hmm. Who monitors what happens with those private, private universities? Even the, the fee they pay, the charge, who, who monitors those fees? Because some of them are charging outrageously. And they have, with impunity, even infringed on the constitution of the country. Because every state university insists that there shouldn't be a state university, there shouldn't be a trade union. So who checks them? We have had a situation where some of the things they do are clearly condemnable. Mm -hmm. I, think, I, I think the issue of state institutions, state universities, private universities, I'm sorry, is something that we really need to review. The federal government has to review what it's doing now. I think it's a fundamental problem which will ask the federal government to, to review the approach. There may be need to establish more universities, both at the level of the state and the private, but there must be a standardized pro forma of how those universities should run and what they should pay to their staff. Very quickly, um, looking at the price of goods and services, the way inflation has quadrupled over time, are there any recommendations from your union owing to the fact that it's, uh, it's a respected union and have um, intellectual people in it? Our position is simple. For as long as there is this drive to allow the, the Nigerian currency to be floating. Mm. Because previous government also knew what they were doing when they were trying to help the Naira. Mm. It was a deliberate attempt to save Nigerians. You float the Naira, you remove subsidy at the same time. These are, these are unfair policies. So that's why we said, because the price of the PMS drives a lot of things in our country. Mm. It drives even the rent you pay, it drives transport, transport. it drives even what you pay for uh, food and whatever. Because you can't even get these things to, to the market without using transport. So for as long as we continue, and if you have seen the, 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 the statistics from the uh, uh, Nigeria, Nigeria uh, Buru uh, uh, service, 
you will find that it has been very, 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 very outrageous between May 29, 2023, and now. I think the, our advice to government is that governments should slow down, strengthen, find a way of strengthening the value of the currency, and then reduce or remove this last increase in the fuel of uh, PMS. When you do that, even if things doesn't go down the way it used to be, there will be some level of stabilization. Because in Nigeria, it's difficult when things have gone up. It never comes to down. Come back. <laughs> but by the time you continue increasing and increasing, then we will, it will be uneasy. It will not be possible for ordinary Nigerians to be able to go to market and, and, and buy things. Today, everybody in Nigeria will tell you that life uh, is no longer what it used to be. Thank you very much for your time. It's my pleasure. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching and remember that labor creates wealth.